It's Friday, November the 21st, 2014. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, and this is episode number 59 of TEN Transport Evolved News for the week beginning November the 17th, 2014. After months of waiting and more hype than we think we've ever seen Toyota give a car launch, the 2016 Toyota Mirai hydrogen fuel cell sedan has been officially launched at the LA Auto Show this week. Capable of travelling about 300 miles on 5 kilograms of compressed hydrogen fuel, the four-seat sedan will go on sale in the US next fall, priced at $57,500 before incentives, with free fuel included for the first three years. For those who prefer to lease rather than buy, Toyota is matching Hyundai Tucson FCV lease deals with a $499 lease deal for 36 months and $3,649 due at signing. Sadly, the biggest challenge facing the Toyota Mirai isn't its price, but the oh-so-limited hydrogen refueling infrastructure available in US at the time of launch. It's no surprise then that Toyota only plans to sell around 200 Mirais in the first year of sale and only 3,000 cars by the end of 2017. It's going to be a really tough sell. In related news, however, Toyota announced this week that it will be working alongside hydrogen refueling company Air Liquide to develop and supply a network of 12 hydrogen refueling stations across the states of New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Connecticut and Rhode Island, ahead of a planned market launch of the Toyota Mirai there early in 2016. This comes on the back of an existing agreement in California, where Toyota has loaned more than $7 million to First Element Fuels to officially support the operation and maintenance of 19 new hydrogen fueling stations in California. It's also worth noting at this point that while Toyota isn't the only automaker bringing a hydrogen fuel cell car to market, it is the only automaker to be investing this heavily in refueling infrastructure, something Toyota is very keen to proclaim. I guess when you're that heavily invested in a new automotive technology, you need to ensure there's a way for customers to refuel their cars, eh? Via Motors, the small Utah company fronted by former GM executive Bob Lutz, has announced that it has received official certification from the US EPA to start delivering its e-rev van to customers across the US. Essentially, factory plug-in conversions of the Chevy Express van, the Via e-rev vans are available in three different guises, a 12-seat minivan, a full-size panel van, or a utility vehicle with flip-up side doors for quick access to equipment whilst out and about. Built on a three-quarter ton chassis. The Via E-Rev features a 23 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack located between the main chassis rails and a 190 kilowatt electric motor connected to the rear wheels. In everyday use, that gives an all-electric range of 35 miles per charge, while a smaller electric generator connected directly to a powerful Via engine up front can provide enough power to get about 350 miles of additional range from a tank of gasoline. Via doesn't give a price for its van on its official website, but since most vehicles will be published in multiples for large fleets, we suspect operators will be more interested in the money they'll save than the money they have to pay to own one. The world's most popular electric car, the five-seat Nissan Leaf hatchback, was designed to be the ideal family-friendly plug-in for urban and suburban life, carrying out daily duties like the school run, errands and commute on just a single overnight charge. But now, 13 Nissan Leafs have left family life at home and joined the US Air Force, working with a fleet of 29 other plug-in vehicles as part of the largest vehicle-to-grid project the world has ever seen. Alongside the other vehicles already on the fleet, the newly conscripted Nissan Leafs will be called into daily service as cars, providing transportation to military personnel in and around the Los Angeles Air Force Base. When not being used for transportation duties, however, they'll be plugged into a suite of specially designed two-way charging stations via their built-in Chadamo DC quick charging port. This makes it possible for the Leafs to feed power back to the electrical grid during peak demand periods, helping reduce the strain on the local grid or even help the base to continue continue running on its own power in an emergency. Clever! With the exception of a handful of plug-in hybrids on sale in Europe, like the Volkswagen V60 plug-in hybrid, Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid and Volkswagen Golf GTE, the majority of plug-in cars on sale around the world aren't designed to tow. In fact, not a single all-electric car on sale anywhere in the world today is officially sold with towing capabilities at point of sale. But that's about to change, says Tesla Motors. In an official letter sent to its 2016 Tesla Model X reservation holders this week, the California automaker has confirmed that the recently delayed 2016 Tesla 
has the Model X will be offered with an optional tow package, allowing customers to take advantage of the Model S's dual motor drivetrain system and unprecedented level of aerodynamic efficiency of any vehicle of the Model X's size. Of towing, Tesla says that it's already working with some of the world's finest rack and accessory companies to ensure that the Model X can carry everything from skis to bicycles with the minimum effect on range and performance, as well as doing so in an elegant and well thought out manner. I just wonder what you'll be able to do with the world's first dual motor all electrics SUV. I can't wait. General Motors' second-generation Chevrolet Volt, due next year as a 2016 model year car, isn't due to be officially unveiled until the 2015 North American International Auto Show in Detroit next January. But that hasn't stopped GM from holding an exclusive event at the LA show this week to show off a little more of the elusive plug-in. At this time, the event, attended by local Volt owners, showed off some of the Volt's new charging features, including GPS-aware charging preferences, a newly illuminated charge port door, and a longer 120 volt emergency charging cable. Chevrolet also pulled up the covers on the new front of the car, giving those who were there a sneaky peek of what the front of the all new Volt will look like. From what we can tell, the new Volt is sleeker and more conventional looking than the outgoing model, with a more angular grille and smaller, more proportional headlights. Add to this what we already know about the Volt from previous announcements, and we're getting pretty excited for the official unveiling in January, aren't you? If previous LA Auto Shows are all about hybrid and electric vehicles, then this year's LA Auto Show is all about the world of hydrogen fuel cell cars. As well as the aforementioned Toyota Mirai FCV, Honda has unveiled its latest hydrogen fuel cell concept car, along with a Chadamo plugged portable power station that makes it possible to power a house from a Chadamo equipped fuel cell car like the Mirai or Honda FCV concept. Then there's been the Volkswagen Golf Sportwagen High Motion, plus the A7 Sportback H-Tron Quattro plug-in hybrid concept from its luxury arm Audi, which has a regular onboard battery pack for around 30 miles of EV range before its range extending fuel cell kicks in. Sadly, however, all of the cars at this year's show have two major hurdles before they become common on our roads, a lack of fueling stations and the fact that it takes more than 56 kilowatt hours of electricity to produce one kilo of hydrogen from water electrolysis, something that will take you about 60 miles in each of the cars shown this year. And those are two rather big problems that need to be solved, PDQ. You've heard the rumour before, a few weeks back in fact if you watch this show regularly, that British firm Jaguar Land Rover was working on an all-electric Range Rover to compete with the Tesla Model S and Tesla Model X electric cars. Well, this week we're bringing you the news that Jaguar Land Rover appears to have trademarked the EV type name in both Europe and the US, leading us to suspect that there's a plug-in car on the way from Jaguar that might combine high performance with the luxury and prestige that Jaguar is known for. Sadly, there's nothing more than a confirmed trademark to go on, but we can't help think that anything else would fit the EV type badge than some form of plug-in. Can you? There's an old saying which goes, where there's muck, there's brass. And perhaps if you happen to be at a water treatment plant responsible for collecting and treating human waste, that might now be better phrased as, where there's muck, there's fuel. And that's exactly what's happening in my home city of Bristol and nearby city of Bath in the UK, where a bus is hitting the streets powered entirely on human poo. <laughs> Enter the Poo Bus, a 100% biofueled bus being operated by the local bus company, which already operates hybrid buses in the local area. To put the squeamish at ease, the bus isn't actually powered by poo, but rather biomethane, produced by the natural digestive processes that break down human waste at a sewage treatment plant. And for those who are wondering, the bus can travel about 186 miles on a single tank of biogas, equivalent to the annual waste of about five people. It does give a whole new meaning to locals who complain that the bus service is a bit crap. That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. And in the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the Evolve Transport news that's fit to print. Subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube. And don't forget to join us live on Sunday at 6pm GMT for the Transport Evolved panel talk show, where we'll be discussing these stories and more. You can watch live on our website at www.transportevolve.com or you can join us via our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash transport evolved. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Have a great weekend and until next time, stay juiced up.